Number two is be intentional. Be all there. Second thing is be intentional. Now this scrap metal, uh, it, it really looks worthless. Uh, it looks like junk and maybe in this state, in this form it is, but I was talking to one of the workers and he said that there is a fortune laying here, that there are millions of dollars uh, worth of, of stuff here. Now, someone who knows what to do with this junk can take this scrap metal through a process that will transform it into something beautiful. Now, believe me, this is a busy place. There are 20 plus people working here, all doing a different job. Some people are taking things apart, sorting things, smashing stuff, things, lifting stuff with these big magnets. I mean, they are being so intentional here. And for a relationship to move from the scrap heap to, to being um, useful and, and uh, beautiful again, it's gonna take a process. It will not happen on its own. Now, like this metal that really is headed for um, the fire, the furnace, so that it can be melted down and all the dross and impurities removed, our relationships have to go through a process. And sometimes God allows us to go through the refiner's fire so that we can become what he wants us to become. You know, he wants to get our character ready to be, ready to be poured into uh, his mold, and that's his word, and that's his ways, um, so that we could become what we never thought we could become. Romans 12 talks about that. It says that do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. Don't, don't allow yourself to be poured into the culture's mold, uh, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's an intentional transformation process and it is necessary for us as individuals and for our relationships um, that maybe are broken or fragmented to be made into something beautiful and valuable and useful again. Are you ready for that process? Are you willing? God will help you. He wants to renew our mind. It takes intention, it really does. Just having a marriage doesn't make it a great marriage, just like Having children doesn't make you a great parent. You have to be intentional. Sometimes we just set it on autopilot because we're so busy, we're multitasking. You know, we're just thinking, oh, we got this, this smooth running machine. But oftentimes our autopilot is set, is set to self. And we're going to preserve, you know, it's going to be our way. We're going to get our needs met and, and be disappointed if our needs are getting met. And so sometimes autopilot, we set it on that. And that's a selfish thing to do. And sometimes we go through life and we think that if a relationship is really meant to be, that everything should just feel and happen naturally because we're in love. It just should be natural. Man, that just doesn't work. It works on the TV screen, but not in real life because it takes intention. In fact, any relationship is going to go through a number of sta stages, whether it's a romantic relationship, a business relationship. It's going to be first glance. The first glance is, you know, you see all the ways that you're alike, you just, wow, he or she, they seem like a perfect person. You know, he just gets me. Uh, at first look, it's like they have no flaws. Everything is just, just wonderful. And even in business, they, you know, that business partner, they share the same ideals, uh, the same work ethic. They get up early like you do. They like the same kind of coffee. You know, they, they're hard workers. You know, so you share all those things at, at, at first look, but then there's a second look look, maybe a reality check. It's when now you don't really see all the things that, the ways that you're alike, you see all the differences and all the ways that, you know, they're just different. Um, and then you begin to wonder, did I marry the right person? I mean, uh, you know, they don't, do they understand me at all? And if the relationship gets stuck right there in all the differences for sure it's going to be headed to the scrap heap at some point. You have to move on to the stage of called last sight to where the love is growing to where it's better at the end than it ever was at the beginning. There's a growth trajectory in that relationship. And, and now you're being honest about each other's uh, flaws and faults but you make a decision that we're going to work through it regardless. We're going to be intentional and we're going to take the necessary action required to get us down the road and to get us to grow deeper in our relationship. 
So you really have to be honest with yourself and evaluate the present. You gotta know where you are and you gotta know where the other person is because you may be, uh, you know, an opposites on your perspective. You can be raised in the same family and have totally different perspective than your siblings. That's just a part of life. So you have to know where you are and ask the question so you know where they are. And maybe a good way to evaluate the present is to simply ask this question, what's missing? What's missing in our relationship? What did we used to do that brought so much life and creativity to our relationship? We had so much fun. We talked. We, we were happy. We did this. What's missing? You know? Can you, can you come up with, identify one thing, just one thing this morning that you know has been missing? And if you could identify one thing and focus on that for this week, forget the other stuff, do this one thing that's been missing and I guarantee it'll impact the relationship if you just do that one thing. Like, well, you know, you always used to pray with me every day. You used to pray with me. That's been missing. You used to pray with me every day. If you would just focus on that one thing, it'll make a difference. Or, you know, you used to just pause before you head out the door. You know, once the kids are on the bus, you used to pause for 10 minutes so we'd have a cup of coffee together before you'd go off to work. I miss that. I miss that connection. Can you imagine if you did that, if you did that one thing this week, you paused before you went to work and had that cup of coffee, guess what? You might be late for work. <laughs> In my notes, I got, I got a heart and I got XOXOXO, okay? You might be late. <laughs> just doing that one thing. What? Then you have to envision a future. Let's just jump to that. Envision a future, okay? You gotta be able to see where you want the relationship to be. What do we want it to be? Where are we headed? Envision the future. Oftentimes we get stuck in the present problem and we can't see forward. We can't see beyond the, the present mess. And we don't think long enough about where we're going as a couple or in this relationship. And being intentional is about painting a picture. It's about uh, creating, uh, Having some vision for the relationship. Now, I love this story in 2 Kings. But the children of Israel, they, uh, they had the prophet of Elisha on their, on their side. And King Aram was their enemy, and he was attacking them. But the children of Israel, they always knew what his next move was. And so King Aram is like, there must be a spy in our, in our midst here. And they said, no, it's not a spy. It's the prophet, the man of God, Elisha. He knows your next move. In fact, he knows even what you speak about in your bedroom, the Bible says. So King Aram said, where is this Elisha? And they say, he's in Dothan. So King Aram sends his massive army to, to uh, Dothan. They surround Elisha in Dothan. They, they got a massive army. They surround him. And then look what the servant, how he responds. It says, when the servant, the man of God, Elisha, got up early the next morning and went outside, there were troops, there were horses, there were chariots everywhere. And so the servant was scared. Oh, sir, what do we do now? The young man cried out to Elisha. And Elisha says, don't worry about it. It's okay, don't be afraid. We got this because there are more on our side then on theirs. And so Elisha prayed this prayer. And I want to suggest that you pray this prayer over your relationships today, the rest of this week. Elisha said, Lord, open his eyes and let him see. Open his eyes. Can you pray that prayer? Lord, open my eyes. See if there's any offensive way in me. Lord, open my family's eyes. Open my spouse's eyes so that we may see. And so the Lord opened the young man's eyes. And when he looked up, he saw that the hillside around Elisha was filled with horses and chariots of fire. This was a supernatural miracle. Uh, just the presence of God's army surrounding the uh, King Aram's army. And they were delivered from that moment. Well, my point is this. Can you have vision to see with eyes of faith where your relationship could be? Be intentional about it. You know, see what the relationship can be. We did this a couple years ago where it was a family project. We had a dream board. 
I can't tell you how wonderful of a family night this was. And it continues. It's in our home. You come to our home, you'll see our dream board. And we've got spots here for Mike and Connie and Tori and Tiffany and Madison. And a place to list what dream they're really living with personally. What dream they, they, they believe God has given them for their life. And then down here, what a family, some family dreams are. And, and it's so wonderful for me to be able to be reminded, to go over and say, you know, uh, wow, I, I forgot. That's what Tori is really passionate about. That's what she's dreaming about. You know what, honey? I'm going to join you in that, in that prayer for the next couple months. I'm going to believe with you. I would never know if I just allowed myself to get stuck in not being all there and just letting things go, you know, oh, I hope we make it. But being intentional, being all there, being intentional and knowing what we're shooting for. I'm telling you, it makes all the difference in the world. Begin to see your family as you'd want them to be. You know, maybe find another role model of a couple that you could, you know, maybe there's a couple at church, they've been married 50 years, you could say, you know what, they've done something right. Maybe there's something we could learn from them. Take them out to dinner. Surely something you can learn from another couple. Find, if you're not sure, if maybe you didn't have the greatest role model growing up for parents, there's others out there that you can surround yourself with that can help you get out of your funk and your bad habits and develop some good habits. And the last thing is this. Initiate a plan of action. Initiate a plan of action. You gotta do something with it. You gotta say, you know what? We're having a date night. We're having a date night. We got away from that for a little while, but now Monday is our Sabbath. It's our day of rest. Today's more of a work day. We take Monday and we will always go out for a date lunch, a date dinner. It's every week. And we ask questions like this. We, you know, we wanna lead well. We don't wanna just speak and not live it. So we're always growing. Okay? We're taking the time. We're having a date night. You know, when's the last, what's the last marriage book you read, men? Or have you ever read one? You want to freak your wife out? <laughs> Bring home a marriage book and say, honey, I really think we should go through this book. <laughs> She'll be like, what? Are you kidding me? She won't know how to take you. But again, it'd probably work out pretty good. All right? But come on, when's the last weekend getaway you had? When's the last marriage conference, marriage retreat you went to? And don't, don't use the excuse, well, you know, you know, and I've heard this so many times, well, we haven't gone out since our kids have been, you know, it's all because it's all about them. Are you, a, are you a kid-centered family or a marriage-centered family? That's a decision you have to make. So you have to initiate a plan of attack. And oftentimes for us, you know, we go through stuff as well. And sometimes we have to back off and realize that it's an attack of the devil. We go to John 10:10 10, 10 where it says the devil comes to kill, steal and destroy. And so sometimes when we're in the heat of battle dealing with something, we have to step back and say there's something bigger at play here. And it's not really you, honey. It's not really me. Now there are some things for sure, but I know there's an enemy that wants to destroy us and wants to kill us, wants to take us out because he knows what he gets. He knows the prize. So you got to initiate a plan of attack. And I'm telling you, you do these two things. A lot of things you could do, but you start here with being all there and taking initiative, being intentional. And you will see some changes in your relationship even this week.